Yo, welcome back to another segment on the Black Suits Tonight Africa Rising channel. Your number one platform where we talk about everything progress on the continent of Africa and black excellence. Well, the popular son of the continent, Aliomi Badara Econthium, well, you popularly know him for the hit maker of Lonely, is literally lighting up the continent of Africa with the Acorn Light Africa project. As to how he came about, the funding, and how he's doing it, you probably don't want to miss it, do you? Stay tuned, I'll be right back. You'll probably hear much about Bill Gates and Elon Max in the news. Well, not because of their wealth. Well, for money, they have a lot. Um, yeah, uh, but mostly because of their humanitarian projects that they are carrying uh, that people think are going to change and shape and improve humanity. Well, I don't know how. Maybe because of suit saying uh, or mass excursion, uh, which wouldn't probably benefit me or my grandma in where I'm coming from, but just their wealth mates. Uh. Well, my point is, there are people that are actually impacting lives, and the common people don't really need it, like me, my grandmother, and this guy. Well, but you probably never hear so much about them in the news. Well, maybe until they are dead. Africa is known to be good at everything, but probably telling our own story. So let's get started by talking about Aliomi Damara Badara. Akon Thiam. Oh, no wonder he chose Akon. Probably is good for the label, but that's easy to remember too. Alright, so the only hit maker for loneliness, the man that the world paid millions to watch his loneliness. For many around the globe, they know Africa for how Western media paint is to be. You know, war, poverty, uh, darkness, impoverishedness. Uh, worst of all, they see it to be a place where crackheads, who doesn't know how to control their resources, uh, you know, rule and causing the people to, I mean, live in perpetual poverty. But you see, the truth is, Africans and their leaders don't control their resources. Most of these resources, if not all of them, are controlled by Western companies who, well, literally, our leaders have to go and beg to get a taste of their own sweat. And so most of these leaders are, I mean, pushed to the point of depending on aid, which has been useless right from its inception. And so the continent is usually thrown into a vicious cycle of useless aid after another to poverty and even worse poverty than we actually began. For more on why aid is actually not working, I refer you to this book written by Dambisa Moyo on why aid has never worked anywhere. And Africa is not different. The other issue is, you see, the few African leaders that have actually tried to circumvent the vicious cycle of useless aid and poverty that I talked about, you see, have been usually faced with going to the IMF, the World Bank, or other Western big guns, as I always say, to take loans that have high interest rates and conditions that are tantamount to the loan default, leaving us in worse conditions than we began with. It took Akon, yes, the son of the continent from Senegal, an American pop star, to think out of the box, or probably thinking without the box. Yes, to find an easy and a cheaper way, well, of solving one of Africa's problems, electrification, through the Akon Light Africa project. Well, he needs to be applauded for that. According to Akon, right, the thought of Africa in the African Americans, well, in America, well, it's more like an abomination. Nobody wants to discuss it, let alone invest in. Well, so you see, as to why an American pop star, even though he's from the continent, will actually invest in about 16 countries, about 15,000 homes, and to 16 million African residents in terms of energy, that is the big deal, and we have to once again upload him for that. The average African home uses about 700 kilowatts of electricity every year. Now, if you convert that to 15,000 homes or you multiply by 15,000 homes, that is more than 10.5 gigawatts of energy right there. You better applaud him for that. 
Even though Akon was born, well, in Missouri in America, but he was raised in a village in Senegal, well, by a parent ah, and a grandmother until he was seven before he moved back to the States. So, you know, in the childhood levels, he had this bond with a grandmother. So when Akon decided to move the grandmother into the city, the grandmother says, nope, nope, and nope. I want to bond with my relatives here. And you know, you see, Ubuntu. I am because you are the village memories. The granny wouldn't move. So Akon said, okay, so what can I do to make you better? The grandmother says, okay, light your app. And that's where the idea of lighting up the grandmother's house and the village actually occurred to him. So what did Akon do? He went to see the president then of Senegal, had a lengthy discussion with him. And at the end, two things were clearer to Akon. These leaders really wanted to do good. They wanted to help, but things were out of their control. And secondly, the point that Akon was trying to achieve by using biofuel, or you could say the traditional way of lighting up, are the reasons why there are many wars in Africa. The stakeholders wouldn't budge to improve the lives of the people there. So Akon had to think out of the boss. And that is why the idea of solar rain, <laughs> Africa, came to him. Now, when it comes to solar panels or solar machines, the Chinese are very notorious for it. And so in some way in 2014, when the solar market was booming, while the Chinese were flooding the American market with the solar panels, well, George Bush, President then wouldn't budge for that. In order for America to profit from their oils and biofuels, George Bush slashed a fine of over 200% tariffs on these Chinese solar machines that were flooding the American market. Check like he didn't really care about humanity's safety. Now that everybody's thinking of going green. Well, they never have probably. Yeah, they never have. So, well, these solar machines ended up sitting in a warehouse somewhere rusting away in the Chinese market somewhere. Now, guess what Akon did? Oh boy, I didn't know that guy could read. I'll pay attention to these politics. So Akon, knowing this, tripped to China. This time, not for a lonely show, but for a business deal. Now, he went to the Jiangsu province to negotiate with one of the biggest solar panel companies, well, in China, to negotiate about a one billion credit line. Now, I don't want to dive much into details with what a credit line is, but take it as this, as simply as you know. It's like somebody giving you a loan of one billion, telling you that anytime you want, you can come and spend money from it, but then when you make some money somewhere, come and try and put some in there, so that shape is for you, just that you don't have to overspend that one billion. So, a credit line was what was given to Acorn worth of these solar panels, as an easy way to fund this solar panel project in Africa. And that was where the Acorn Light Africa project began. Well, you probably ask, is another form of aid on the continent? Why should we care? Well, you have to care because no, no, and no. It's not another form of aid. Acorn himself actually said that he doesn't believe in aid working on the continent. He believed in real projects. If it was aid, it would end up like the rest, very useless with a lot of noise about it. But take it, Acorn's project is more like the 2021 Tesla Model 3. Very useful and less noise. Alright, so not only is this project making money for Acorn, but it's ending up solving real African problems by providing electricity to over 16 million people, employing over 5,000 people in Africa, and also using one of Africa's greatest potential, the solar energy, and also most importantly, well, letting the world go green. The world doesn't get greener than that, does it? In the end, these African leaders will pay back the cost of installment of these solar panels, well, flexibly. You see, unlike the IMF or the World Bank's starting kind of credit facilities, this is a credit line, the flexible any loan can ever get. More than 600, I mean more than 600 million residents of Africa actually lacked access to basic electricity by the year 2014. Now, today in 2021, the number has dropped to below 570 million. Well, according to the World Energy Statistics. Now, that might be predominantly by one month's effort. If that is not impact, I don't know what is. You see, now, a lot of people talk about potential on the continent of Africa. But you see, most of these potentials can be reality by literally seeing the light. And that's what Acorn 
has just begun. Now, if just one man and the Echo Light African project can be this impactful in six years, then I think we need just about 10 of them to literally light the whole world. I began this segment by saying that Africa is actually bad at telling our own stories. And well, Western media too has found a weird way of being silent about Acorn's project that is actually letting the world go green and helping solve one of humanitarian challenges. Well, we will not let it go. We will say it as to why the world is silent. Well, probably because he's a true son of the Africa and solving real African issue or well because it's an ex-convict or a polygamous. Ah, who cares? As long as Africa is going to see the light, Akon, you are welcome today and every day. And other diasporians who want to also change or solve other problems, you are also welcome. This is Africa. This is the help we need. And anybody that wants to come in must come in big. And we will tell the story this time by our own self. Well, the name still remains Ben Carson. Well, if you like this segment or any issue pertaining to Africa's development and black excellence, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and comment below. This channel is dedicated to bringing you only the best on the continent of Africa. See you with my next episode.